Here we have Ford's F350 7.3 diesel engine Power Stroker Super Duty. What I've got my hands in the hair, I don't know. Oh my god, she's a big girl. She's over 22 feet long. She has a huge eight foot ass. But all in, this is called a 10 foot truck. And what do I mean by that? It means from 10 foot away, it looks really good. <laughs> The decals on here have been on here a long, long while. I have touched them up a little bit and added some. There's a video of me putting some decals on the back. The big Ford one, I just see a minute ago. And there's another video of me sorting the wheels out and tyres. Because they were wrong. And I mean quite dangerously wrong, and I can't believe someone had done that. But a video coming out of that one as well. You're probably going to come out the same sort of time. We're going to have a quick look around the inside, the buck, underneath, and the engine. And if you want to see this truck and me, yeah, if you want to see the truck, we are going to the Museum of Power in Malden, and it's on the 3rd of September, and this is going to be there, 2023, because you never know when you're watching. So in a couple of weeks, this truck's going to be there with me, and you can have a little look around it. The front is matte black wrap, done quite nice. The original this car would have been all red. I think you can see some of that on the buck end here. And then someone put these very nice graphics on, which do look really good. However, I've had to touch them up. This is me. Yeah, and a couple other little bits. Basically what someone had done is there's some decals on there already and someone took some off. Now, I've done videos where people put um, stickers and stuff on there and you use petrol you get with petrol brilliant what you don't do is use petrol or to get decals and stickers off of already stuff on there it bubbled it up so I had to cut it out try and match it many different shades of white red etc a little bit difficult but I've done a reasonable job of it I think a massive 7.3 litre diesel engine in there pop the bonnet it is just a ginormous engine please note the huge can in Two batteries, I'll tell you about that. Basically there's two batteries because it's a V8 in there and it takes a lot for them plugs, uh, you know, the heat plugs and so on. The drain on them is just phenomenal, so it needs two batteries. Huge can in. Now, this is supposed to get 14 miles to the gallon-ish. American miles, not the same as English miles, get a bit more, we use a bit more petrol um, and diesel, etc. a bit more to the litre. But things you'd need to do this engine to make it do better miles per gallon would have been the huge can in filter, massive exhaust, times two, that's what I said, twin exhaust, they're huge, screws could live in there. Well, I keep calling a power command system, but it's an ECU upgrade. And this isn't just a cheap one, this is the power setting, so you've got standard high revs, 40, 60, 90, 100, 140 uh, extra PSI, that's massive. Supposedly that's going to get you an extra, well, six miles to the gallon. Keep doing this. Six miles to the gallon. Yeah! Six miles to the gallon. <laughs> so about 20 on a run. I mean, realistically, we've got a 3.2 Range Rover here and they're crud because they get 18, do you know? And they're not as fun and yummy as this. It's not jacked up like my Dodge Ram was. I can actually drive this better except they ain't for us. While we're under the bonnet, the engines are good for... 500,000 miles I've been told. However, you must service them, and I've been told to do that every 5,000 miles. I've got an extra filter with it, it's done 4,000 now, so it's coming up for one. It takes 14 and a half litres of oil. I didn't expect that. The radiator leaked, sorted that out, and it takes, I mean, I'm, it seemed that like I put 15 litres of antifreeze in there and kept going. So someone can say it takes 10, but I'll tell you now, it just kept going. I, I thought it was leaking underneath and it wasn't. Just kept going. So, massive engines obviously take massive amounts. I think usually for diggers over in America, these 7.3 engines, they're just mammoth and they'll keep going. They'll pull a house down. <laughs> Back in the 70s, when I was a little lad, there was the Ford Transit, it used to have twin wheels at the back, and I always wanted one. I just always wanted one. And then Lee for Whitman came out, and there he is, pulling down the house. I'm like, I want one. And I've actually got one. Twin back wheels. Yes. So the six tyres, I'd like to upgrade. There's a video on the channel. You'll get to see that one as well. The nice decals on the front. And the Ford on the back. Marks out of 10, please. I like it. It's just grotesquely huge, and I think it marries up with the rest of it. 
blacked the wheels properly, I've sprayed underneath, I've rubbed a lot of rust away that was underneath and little bits and bobs to make it mine. I fed the seats only once, I've got about three more feedings, they were so dry. A little bit damaged, have a look at it in a second. However, just, just a lovely truck and everything I would have done, someone has previously done. So I would have liked them to improve Mars per gallon with the airflow, with the ECU and with the huge exhaust check. I would like to put a front bumper strip on it, you know, the protector, and I've done the window bits, the extra bits, um, visors, <laughs> done. Stereo inside, we'll look at it in a second. Six by nine is back and front, and a base box behind the seat, done. So everything I would have liked them to have done has been done, very nicely. But it's aging, it is showing its age. What's that now, 2001, 2023, 22 years old, it's had a bit of a hard life. But it does drive well. So we've got the extended cab, Julie cab, twin cab, cab cab, I don't know, it's not king cab. In the back, we have what was a fifth wheel. Big, big girl. Now at the back, he had two toolboxes, I was told, and there was these massive ripped holes in either side. And I thought, it looks horrible. And the wife said, we'll just get two new toolboxes. Since I have, and they look quite nice, I think now. Sort of suits it. I've just got to tidy up, I've blacked that, I've just got to put all the bottom down, but nothing in there, but it looks good. And the rear, tail light works, window goes across, and this comes down, electrics. I've got another video hopefully coming, I'm going to get a huge light across there. And then that horrible, I know the UK spec has got a fog light, but make you look nice, not dangle down crap wire. Someone's nice to put reverse lights in there, I'm going to do the same with the fog lights and put them in there as well. Tinted lights are hate, but they're still LED, quite bright and with the lot I'm going to get, looks nice. Move to the inside. Electric, I sewed this up, uh, yeah okay, I'm, I'm not a sewer. Put black the lariat bit, but end of the day, it doesn't look too bad in there. And the rear looks quite nice as well. Six by nines in the back and back here, there's a base box thing and there's a big base box thing there. Quite nice in the back really. Usual bits down here, handbrake, and obviously that's been knackered. This foot brake business doesn't work. People push it down, forget it, and that's what wear it out. Steering wheel could do with a bit of love. Inside the cockpit, you immediately get to see this. I'll turn it on in a second. Normal dials, lights, quite a nice stereo. This is the base box system here. You get your twin visors, that one's broke. It looks like, oh yeah, you've got your microphone for Parrot so I can actually talk when I'm driving, legally. And there's uh, LED lights up there. Quite a nice glove box. Drinks. A little bit of stuff under here. Not too bad, really. This is supposed to be for the fifth wheel. It comes with a remote control here as well. If I just turn the ignition on, you'll see this little boost box thing. You see it? Looks quite nice, doesn't it? She'll start it in a minute. And you can see it sounds quite nice for a, oh, it's not yes. <sighs> Kids are coming. It ain't your 5.7 Hemi, it's 7.3 diesel and it does sound like a truck. There we have it. Nice, quick review. Uh, Forward. Let's go round the truck one last time, start her up, and there we go, my F350 that I have always wanted. And I've said the engine is not a 5.7 Hemi, it's not even the 150 little red one I had. Both videos are on here, and lots of little videos of them are on my channel. Please watch them, they're really quite good. But here's the big girl. Let's have a quick look round her. She's got a hell of a presence. The thing I think people think she's an old Ford Ranger here when they come up that way and they sort of get to the side and think, oh my God. I mean, the wind mirrors are normally where you are, but you can see the side here is how wide they are. So there we go. There is your black matte wrap. Black matte wrap, got it right. The other decals, and some of them I put there myself just to take out some of the whole bits. Nice side steps, can get some lights in them. Twin back axle wheels, huge buttocks. <laughs> so it's 2001, I like that Ford, 
Originally on the video I didn't actually put this bit in here and someone said it looked a bit crud, it looked like a baseball cap if you look at it. And I put that back on that little bit there. Doesn't look too bad. Marks out of 10, you'll watch the other video, you'll see it. Coming around again on the decals. It does look nice. As I said, it's a 10 foot car, you're not going to see all the uh, defects. I had to do that bit there because it was all where it is and you can see some bubbling actually. But yeah, just a nice motor. I, I wasn't sure actually whether it's slightly higher, but I'm guessing it's not. Um, I'd like to jack up everything. And also, I'd like the old five running lights on the top, but hey, there you go. All in, very nice. Spotlights, don't know. LED bar, don't know. I think actually it's quite nice as it is, don't you? I cleaned the lights as well. Got a bit of motion now, and I've got to figure out how to get the damn thing out. Sprayed up the front, so it's black rather than rusty the way it was. You'll check out the video of me. It'll be off my op where I'll be doing the back brakes. Not such a simple task as I thought it was going to be. So it's jack up, wheels off. This centre hub has to come out. That comes off. And then under here is like a spigot bit. You can knock it off or around or get a special tool. I'm going to knock it around. We're going to mark it up where it is because obviously there's bearings under there. And then everything comes off. And then I've got new brakes coming with all the little bits as well. So, so I'm including the springs and the little clips because you know one's going to break being on here all that time, don't you? So that's what's going to be next. But that'll be a while. So these three are coming out very soon. Off, turn it back on again. And I thought you do that to old cars. You got to do it to this. And also, you can't start this and drive away straight away. A little light comes on and says service or something or other. Um, you got no revs. And if you let it tick over, then you can drive. I'm assuming that's get all the oil around that huge engine. I mean, you're never going to get a Van Diesel and walk around with that in your arm, would you? Ready? Here we go then. On boost system. The little light we're waiting for is in there. Let it go out, turn it off, turn it back on again one more time. That little light came on before and it wouldn't move until that went out. And, and there we go. Nice little dash, everything is working, the volts are working like it should do. Oil pressure's good, fuel half a tank. 130 litres, I have not filled it up yet. And 130 litres at £1.50 odd per litre is quite a bit at present minute. So, yeah. On the clock is 179,000 miles, which is nothing for one of these, really. And it don't sound bad, really, does it? So, there we go. Thank you, please like, share and subscribe, check out my Dodge Ram, check out my F-150 and check out all the other videos that are coming out of this, because I'm asking you to. <laughs> if you want to come and see me on the 3rd of September 2023 at the Museum of Power in Molden, it'd be nice to see anybody that comes and visits me. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'm going to go. Bye bye. Laters!